Here are the top stories for today, September 3, 2021. The country's Food and Drug Administration approves the use of Moderna COVID-19 jobs for people aged 12 to 17, ramping up efforts to protect more Filipinos against the virus. President Rodrigo Duterte assures an obligated fund allotments of the Department of Health will be used for its programs and projects. He also expresses delight as more Filipinos recover from COVID-19, outnumbering severe cases and deaths. The government is bracing for the second wave of COVID-19 vaccine procurement as second-generation jobs may be produced to deal with emerging coronavirus variants. And as the bear months kick in, the Trade Department urges manufacturers of Noche Buena products to keep current prices for now. Good day, I'm Marita Muaje. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story for today, the younger population may soon get inoculated against COVID-19. This after the Food and Drug Administration approves today the emergency use of Moderna for children ages 12 to 17 years old. In an interview at the Laging Handa briefing, FDA Director General Eric Domingo said Moderna has applied for emergency use in the country two weeks ago and was given an EUA after a thorough review by the regulatory experts of the FDA. Ang mga uh, usual lamang po na mga precautions kapag tayo po ay nagbabakuna, uh, kailangan po nandoon. And ito pong sa for Moderna, very similar to the other mRNA vaccine like Pfizer, ang watch out for ng ating mga vaccinators at ng mga doctors, yung very rare cases of myocarditis no? para pong uh, inflammation sa puso na nakikita sa mga very few, very rarely, one in for every million, siguro a few very every million na binakunahan at mas nakikita sa mga younger males. So ito po ang kailangan lamang bantayan. But definitely, with the Delta variant affecting a lot of children, uh, nakita po ng ating mga expert that the benefit of using the vaccine outweighs the risk. Pfizer vaccines may soon be available in the market. The Food and Drug Administration said Pfizer jobs already get the full approval from the US FDA, which means its efficacy and safety is acceptable. FDA Director General Eric Domingo says they have already sent Pfizer their requirements for product registration, and their team is already reviewing the evaluation in the US for faster approval. Ayon dito naman po sa Pilipinas, pinadala na rin namin ang ano, yung Sekraki, no, yung Pfizer, yung kumpanya, mm-hmm. ng mga requirements for product registration dito sa atin. Pero ang sabi nila ay pinag-uusapan pa no, sa kanilang headquarters kung kailan sila mag apply ng mga registration sa iba't ibang mga bansa, katulad po ng Pilipinas. Pero ang FDA nakahanda na po, no, natanggapin ang kanilang application. At yung mga team natin, actually sa nga, ang mga ngayon, nire-revisa na nila yung iba mga dokumento. Kapag nakakuha rin po sila dito sa atin ng approval or yung Certificate of Product Registration, ibig sabihin po nun, maaari na pong ibenta sa mga butika, sa mga ospital, iriseta ng doktor ang bakuna at magiging accessible na po ito sa private sector. Malacanang maintains there are no sacred cows in the Duterte administration's fight against corruption. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the president has always been intolerant of corrupt government workers and his friends and allies will not be exempted from his crackdown against corruption. This after Senator Manny Pacquiao told Duterte not to defend government officials involved in irregularities. Pacquiao's statement came after President Duterte defended Health Secretary Francisco Duque over his supposed mismanagement of the COVID-19 pandemic response funds. Roque said no one from the government has received any preferential treatment from Duterte. He said Duque's case is different because there is no proof that the DOH chief is involved in corruption. Kapag meron naman po talagang datos at katotohanan sa mga paratang ng korupsyon, hindi po ipinipikit ng mata ang, ang mata ng, ng ang presidente, hindi po niya pinipikit ang kanyang mga mata. Pilipinas, pangako ni presidente, walang korap na mananatili sa kanyang administrasyon. Tingnan lang po natin ang katotohanan at pawang katotohanan lamang sa panahon 
ng politika. President Rodrigo Duterte says the over 1.8 million Filipinos who have recovered from COVID-19 can be attributed to the efforts of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and other health professionals. The president said the number of recoveries is a very good indication that they are exhausting all efforts to beat the pandemic. Now, uh, the Philippines has uh, breached uh, 2 million. 2 million mark. Kaya uh, medyo yung gun, ang ganun karami po ang tinamaan ng COVID. However, ang consuelo natin is that 1.8 million of these have recovered. So meron na lang 200 na wala. Uh, and that is a very good uh, uh, reflection of what our health uh, people are doing and uh, I would like also to commend Secretary Doki for that. President Duterte meanwhile explained that the 11.89 billion pesos unobligated allotments of the Department of Health will be eventually used for its programs and projects. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, chaired by Senator Richard Gordon, earlier conducted an inquiry into the deficiencies found by the Commission on Audit on the OH over its supposed mishandling of the over 67 billion pesos COVID-19 response. Address myself to everybody, to the senators especially. Yung unang sabi ko na complaint that unspent yung money ng uh, DOH na binigay sa kanila. The DOH is uh, planning so many things to fight the COVID. At bakit mo naman pakialaman na ito may pera dito, bakit hindi pa ito nagastos? Why are you trying to run the Department of Health with your investigation? You know, eventually this money will be spent gastusin ito para sa mga programa ng Department of Health. So do not tayong mga lahat sinit, do not investigate programs which are ongoing. The Department of Health said it has already downloaded about 99% of the funds allotted for the Special Risk Allowance or SRA of eligible healthcare workers. The allotted fund for the SRA is 311 million pesos. In a statement, Health Undersecretary Leopoldo Vega said the fund has been downloaded to the healthcare facilities for processing and distribution. He said the 311 million pesos are intended for the first batch of eligible healthcare workers who have not yet received their allowance. He said the SRA for the next batch has already been requested from the DBM. Meanwhile, the DOH said it has proposed a budget of 73.99 billion pesos for COVID-19 response for next year. However, the Department of Budget and Management approved only 19.68 billion pesos. During the House Appropriation Committee's hearing on the proposed 2022 budget, Duque said that 73% budget slash for the agency's COVID-19 response next year would affect the allocations for the allowances and benefits for health workers, including hazard pay, special risk allowance, and meals, among others. Duque said the budget cut might be due to the projection that herd immunity could be achieved by next year. The total allocation for the department next year, including the COVID-19 response funds, would be 242.22 billion pesos. The government is set to order more second-generation vaccines that could serve as an added protection for people against emerging coronavirus variants. In a statement, National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said they are already discussing the allocation of funds for the measure while waiting for the recommendations of the Vaccine Experts Panel. 
He said 2.2 billion pesos will be allocated for the second wave of vaccine procurement. He also reports that the government is already negotiating with its multilateral partners, the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank for the procurement of the jobs. The Department of Health clarified that the projected average of 30,000 COVID-19 cases per day in the National Capital Region by the end of September can still change. DDOH said changes may happen as local government units implement targeted and granular lockdowns, enhancing active case findings and fast-tracking vaccination. What I remember is by end of September, the average na daily cases no, based on that range will be around 30,000 cases per day. And it's for NCR alone. Pero sa akin po, alam niyo para saan po ang projections. Ito po ay hindi parang isang ballpark kung saan ang um, ma-reach man natin hindi. Ginagamit ng Department of Health at ang gobyerno ang projections para i-project natin at malaman natin ano ba yung pangangailangan natin. Kung nakikita nga natin na ganito karami ang ating active cases. So the goal is to ensure to minimize the number of severe and critical cases and to reduce the number of fatalities. That's what we are aiming for po. Still to come, the palace rejects the enforcement of hard lockdowns in COVID-19 hotspots. And booster shots versus COVID-19, not for now as the country wants to increase the current vaccination rate first. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Ang disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. Kaya tayo na po at magparehistro at magpabakuna para sa ligtas ng pamilya, ligtas ng bansa. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Si Mayor Richard Gomez po ito, sa patuloy na pagharap natin sa COVID-19 pandemic, bawat isa ay bid at solusyon para wakasan ito. Huwag po tayo matakot magpabakuna dahil ito ay tiyak ng proteksyon hindi lamang sa ating sarili, kundi pati sa ating pamilya, mahal natin sa buhay, komunidad. Kaya't magparehis at magpabakuna para sa ligtas sa pamilya, ligtas sa bayan, ang disiplinado ng Pilipino, rehistrado at kailangan bakunado. Malacanang rejects a proposed three-week hard lockdown in COVID-19 hotspot areas. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the proposal of the Okta Research Group is not doable because the government is aiming for total health amid the prevailing pandemic. Well, sa ngayon po, parang hindi po doable yan. Dahil nakikita naman po natin na ayaw nating lalo pang dumami ang hanay ng mga nagugutom. We are aiming for total health. Bawasan ang pagkalat ng kaso at bawasan ang hanay ng mga nagugutom. Ang ating objective doon sa um, less than 2% na kinakailangan mahospital, pinagahandaan po natin. Dapat meron na silang mapupuntahang hospital. Baguio City has been closed off again to tourists and non-essential travelers from September 3 to September 19 due to a spike in COVID-19 infections in the summer capital. Mayor Benjamin Magalong said travelers who have no compelling reason to be in the city will be turned away regardless of the quarantine status of their places of origin. The travel restriction was made a day after the city marked its 112th Foundation Day. As of Wednesday, Baguio's active cases had climbed to 904. The city has so far logged over 17,000 cases since the pandemic began in March last year. The Cordillera region has tallied 12 cases involving the Delta variant as of August 31. 
Meanwhile, about 7,500 tourism workers in Baguio City have been vaccinated against COVID-19, exceeding the target of almost 6,000 workers. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat attended the three-day ceremonial vaccination program from August 31 to September 1 for employees of accommodation establishments, restaurants, academies, and schools, among others. The event was perheaded by the Department of Tourism, Baguio Tourism Council, Hotel and Restaurant Association of Baguio, and Baguio Country Club. Malacanang reiterated the need to raise the country's vaccination rate before administering booster shots as demanded by several sectors. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the country has so far administered 34 million COVID-19 jobs as of September 1. Of these number, about 14 million or 18.29% of the target population are fully vaccinated. However, Roque assured that the government has already allocated funds for the procurement of booster shots in 2022. The Department of Health and the World Health Organization earlier said there is still a lack of evidence showing the ability of booster shots to strengthen immunity against COVID-19. The government adjusted its target from attaining herd immunity to population protection by inoculating 50 to 60 percent of the population by year-end. The Department of Health is looking to hire additional medical personnel to be deployed to Zamboanga del Sur. The local government of Pangasinan is also looking for more healthcare workers. Lead Kabagani has a story. The Department of Health is looking for doctors, nurses, and midwives under emergency hiring for immediate deployment to the Zamboanga del Sur Medical Center. DOH Regional Director Dr. Joshua Brillantes said they will replace the medical workers who resigned due to exhaustion and being overwhelmed by the increasing cases of COVID-19 in the province. Brillantes said the ZDSMC can no longer provide quality health care as the workforce is depleted. As of August 27, the province of Zamboanga del Sur has a 55.8% bed occupancy rate in the entire region. Zamboanga del Sur has 7,130 confirmed cases of COVID-19, the second highest in the region, with 5,643 recoveries, 1,266 active cases, and 221 deaths. In Pangasinan, the provincial government is hiring 155 more healthcare workers to ramp up the province's response against the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor Amado Espino III said the additional health workers will be deployed to 14 provincial government-run hospitals. The Pangasinan Provincial Hospital, which has the most number of patients, is expected to receive a large number of workers. Interested applicants such as nursing aides, midwives, and other healthcare workers are advised to send their credentials to the Provincial Health Office, Provincial Human Resources Office, or at the Governor's Office. Pangasinan has experienced an influx of COVID-19 patients for the past weeks wherein makeshift tents were set up to accommodate more non-COVID-19 patients. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Lid Kabagani. In our business news, the Department of Trade and Industry has urged manufacturers and retailers of Noche Buena products to keep their current prices for the upcoming Christmas holiday to help ease the burden of Filipinos struggling to make ends meet amid the pandemic. DTI Consumer Protection Group Undersecretary Ruth Castello said keeping prices at manageable levels will be a relief for Filipinos who will be celebrating Christmas in a pandemic for two straight years. The DTI is expected to issue the SRP list for Noche Buena products by the end of October to early November. Meanwhile, Castello said the new SRP list of basic goods released last August 29 is effective immediately. About 76 out of 216 items in the SRP Bulletin increased their prices such as canned goods, instant noodles, coffee, milk, condiments, and non-food items like detergent soap. Up next, 
PCO Secretary Martin Andanar hopes that government media reforms under the Duterte administration will continue and improved distance learning is possible thanks to an educational radio set up in school in Northern Samar. We're back after a quick break. Stay with the PNA Newsroom. Ako po si Sergeant Munoz ng Philippine Air Force para sa kampanya na disiplina muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Proud po akong sabihin na bakunado na ako laban sa COVID-19. Kaya naman po panatag ang aking kalooban dahil alam ko na protektado ako at ang aking pamilya laban sa coronavirus. Bida ang may disiplina. Kaya naman magparehistro at magpabakuna na para sa ligtas na pamilya at ligtas na bayan. Commander Dito Rocampo po ng Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary para sa kumpanyang Disiplina Muna na pinungungunahan ng DILG. Bakit natin kailangan magpabakuna laban sa COVID-19? Dahil mahal mo ang iyong sarili, pamilya at bayan. Ang bakuna ang tiyak na paraan para tuluyang mapigilan ang pagkalat ng virus. May mga patunay na mababa ang porsyento ng pagkalat ng COVID-19 sa mga nabakunahan na. At matapos mabakunahan, malaki na ang tsansa na makabalik ka sa normal mong pamumuhay. Kaya tulad ko magparehistro na at magpabakuna na kontra COVID-19. Muli po, ako si Commander Dieter Ocampo, disiplina muna ambassador. Nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna dahil bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro tayo at magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andanar is hoping that succeeding leaders of the country will adopt the reforms made by the PCOO and its attached agencies. Andanar discussed over a radio interview the accomplishments of the PCOO which included technological changes that allowed government messages to become more accessible to the public. He said communication campaigns such as the Duterte Legacy Information Drive should be institutionalized. He said this is is one way to promote transparency as it openly tells the public where the taxes they are paying are being spent. And then I also said upgrading the capacity of the PCOO and its attached agencies allowed them to reach at least 8 million Filipinos online through social media and other platforms. He said this is part of the reformed national communications policy which not only increased the presence of the government but also harmonized the flow of information needed by the people. A women's association in a conflict-affected barangay in Surigao del Sur received 500,000 pesos in cash assistance for livelihood projects and other endeavors aimed to improve their quality of lives. Governor Alexander Pimentel handed over on August 31 the cash aid to KM9 Simuwao Kabudagan Association, a women's group in Barangay Diatagon in Lianga Town. DKSKA members are among the vulnerable sectors in the area previously victimized by the terroristic activities of the New People's Army. They are now working with the help of the Community Support Program team of the Army's 3rd Special Forces Arrowhead Battalion. The Army said the cash aid will help to uplift the and alleviate the lives of the people of Barangay Diatagon and further insulate indigenous peoples against the schemes of the communist terrorist groups. The military has declared the weakening of the New People's Army in Northern Samar following the surrender of about 282 supporters and fighters. 
The NPA surrenders pledge their allegiance to the government in a ceremony at Silvino Lubus Town last August 2. Empty promises, extortion, and challenges brought by the health crisis prompted them to abandon the communist ideology. Lieutenant Colonel Ferdinand Encot, commander of the Army's 19th Infantry Battalion, said majority of the surrenders have been a source of strength, logistics, supplies, and information. These surrenders came from the 11 barangays covered by the Army's People-Centered Community Support Program. Meanwhile, 10 suspected NPA rebels killed a militiaman inside his home in Sitio Basiao, Barangay Pinokawa, in Valle Hermoso, Negros Oriental, on Wednesday night. The 62nd Infantry Battalion said CAFGU member Cirilo Paderna was shot dead in front of his family by suspected members of the NPA's Central Negros 1. Juanita Paderna's wife called for justice for her murdered husband, while Pinocawa Barangay Chairman Danilo Salmo condemned the killing. About 800 learners from remote villages in Palapag, Northern Summer stand to benefit from the Radio-Based Instruction Project or RBI. RBI is being used as one of the viable platforms while regular face-to-face -face classes are still suspended. The initiative pushed by nonprofit groups Sierra Falcones and Save to Send Project is supported by the Department of Education Northern Summer Division. Through RBI, teachers guide and assist the students through radio while reading and studying their printed modules, allowing them to understand their lessons easily. Kabakuha National High School is a first beneficiary of the educational radio programs that can be heard through the FM band. Kapakuhan has 26 teachers trained to operate RBI. The campus has 800 students from different remote villages. Aside from Kapakuhan NHS, the Pisoko Transistor Mo project is also implemented in Las Navas 1 Central in Las Navas, Northern Samar. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The country's Food and Drug Administration approves the use of Moderna COVID-19 jobs for people aged 12 to 17, ramping up efforts to protect more Filipinos against the virus. President Rodrigo Duterte assures an obligated fund allotments of the Department of Health will be used for its programs and projects. He also expresses delight as more Filipinos recover from COVID-19, outnumbering severe cases and deaths. The government is bracing for the second wave of COVID-19 vaccine procurement as second-generation jobs may be produced to deal with emerging coronavirus variants. And as the Bermans kick in, the Trade Department urges manufacturers of Noche Buena products to keep current prices for now. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks and face shields. Wash your hands often. Practice safe physical distancing. Go out only for essential reasons. And get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I'm Marita Mwahe. Have a good day.